Watch out, I'm going to the dark side. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Today I've got a special project. We're going to be talking about Japanese versus Western saws. What's better? How do they work? What are the differences? And uh, how to use them? So let's actually jump into a little bit of this. I've had a lot of people asking me why I use Western saws and not Japanese saws. And honestly, the, the big question for that is I haven't gotten into them. It is a different mindset. It's a different body mechanics. Uh, it's a different functionality to them. So it's something you have to learn. And a lot of people either lean one way or the other. Uh, very few people can actually or regularly use both. The other big reason is I don't like the cheap quality ones you get from Harbor Freight and whatnot. Uh, they just don't, they don't fit the bill. Number one, they're a thicker plate which kind of goes against the whole Japanese saw. Number two, they're really kind of crunky in the way they work and you know it's okay for the five dollars it costs but it's not really all that good. To get a really good Japanese style saw um, is something that takes a decent amount of money. And I recently came across a company that makes really good quality Japanese saws at a decent price. Uh, they're hand wrapped, they're in great shape, and I am really loving them. They all come from Japan and are, are, are really good. And so I, I finally went in and I got a, a set of Japanese saws and you're gonna see me using them more in the shop now. So I wanna jump in and look at what are some of the differences between Western and Japanese saws and what are some of the things you might want, need to know before you choose which one you want to get. So let's take a look. So first, let's look at some of the differences between Western saws and Japanese saws. Now, first and foremost, Western saws have the teeth pointing forward so that you can actually push through the cut. Um, technically, the reverse cut doesn't actually make any cut. Uh, it does a little bit, but not much. And so your main cutting force and push uh, drive is on the push stroke. Whereas with a Japanese saw, it's actually on the pull stroke. Uh, some people will say that the pull stroke is more efficient. Some people say the push stroke is more efficient. And it really depends on your body style and the way you work, whether or not this is more efficient or that's more efficient. The big difference between pulling and pushing is when you push, you're putting all that force into the plate of the saw. And so this whole plate has to be very rigid so that it doesn't buckle and bend. Whereas when you're pulling, you're using the plate in tension. And that way, the plate can become thinner. And the thinner you can make the plate, the easier it is to cut through the wood and the easy, because you're removing less material. Another major difference between Western saws and, and Japanese saws is Western saws have, a, have set on the teeth. So the teeth will actually stick out a little bit farther than the plate. Uh, this makes it fairly easy so you can actually guide them through the cut. You can cut more on one side or the other. The problem with that is it takes out more material, so it actually ends up uh, requiring more work in order to get the saw through with more set. So the less set you can put on the teeth, the easier it is to cut. But the more set, the more control or the ability you have to turn the saw in the cut. Whereas with Japanese saws, they don't have any set at all, so they're all sticking out the exact same thickness of the plate. This makes it great if you want a flush cut, so that your teeth aren't going to be garring into the wood you're cutting against. Um, but it also means that once they're set in a groove, they're really not going to turn much. Uh, they're, they're going to stay straight and true uh, far easier than with a Western saw. Another big difference between a Japanese saw and a Western saw is most Western saws are designed to use with one hand. So you have one hand that is gripping the saw and pushing it. Whereas with a Japanese saw, they can both pull on it, much like you would with a golf swing. Um, your thumb's in line, you can actually pull. And you can use both arms to make the motion as opposed to just one. Some of the larger uh, Western saws will actually have a thumb hole up here, so it makes it a little easier. Um, or if you're ripping on a bench, you can use both hands um, to cut with. But a Japanese saw is designed to run with both hands. So let's look at some of the different types of saws you can get. Now, in most Western saws, you're going to only have one set of teeth on here. And here I have a cross cut, and then I have my ripping teeth. And if you want to see what's the difference between cross cut and ripping teeth, I have a whole other video on that. I'll leave a link to that up in the card, so you can take a look at that. And so you have to have two saws in order to do you know, two major uses. And they usually end up, you collect them in pairs of you know, a ripping saw and a cross cut saw. Whereas with a Japanese Ryoba, and I'm going to start messing up these names because I'm not a Japanese person, sorry. <laughs> Um, you actually have uh, two set of teeth. So on the one side, we have our, our uh, ripping cut, and on the top, we have our cross cut. And they're filed much the same way, in that the file for ripping goes straight across the plate, and for cross cutting, it's skewed at an angle slightly. 
Um, another difference is that the gullets, uh, the, the teeth on this are designed to be cut with a triangular file, so it, it, every angle is at 60 degrees. Makes it very easy to resharpen and work with your saws, whereas with a Japanese saw, they're used with a much, much finer angle file, and they're very difficult to sharpen yourself, and most of the time, once they wear out, you replace the plate. And they're designed to replace just the, the plate as you have the screw that you can take out and uh, flip them out. And I really like how these ones, these ones came out for the price, they're fantastic. Um, they actually have a split nut, so that you can loosen it up, pull the plate out, replace it. You can um, sharpen them. Um, some of them aren't um, case hard, aren't uh, um, hardened on the tips, uh, but this one they are hardened on the tips, so the tip will last a little, little bit longer. Uh, but once they do, they're going to be. Uh, you need to replace the blade. So here you have a Dazuki. Uh, it's basically a replacement for the dovetail saw. Um, so your Western dovetail saw has a very fine tooth, very little set on it. Um, it is a, um, a ripping cut, so it will cut down through the grains. Now this is very much the same thing. It even has a back on it because you're not using the second, the second plate. Uh, the back keeps it stiffer, so even though you're pulling it, this is going to have a much straighter, stiffer cut less chance of wandering around. Uh, so for dovetails, fine joinery, and things like that, uh, a Dazuki like this is a fantastic use. The Ryoba is great for your general use. Most of all the cuts you're gonna make are with one of these. And you can just flip it over whether you are ripping or cross-cutting. Um, you can go back and forth between the two. And it's a very, very versatile saw. I'm gonna be trying to use these a lot more and you will see um, how I can pull this out occasionally. Another great thing about Japanese saws is because you're using both hands to pull on it, um, it's great for kids. Kids can work with it a lot easier because they're using both hands to pull. So if they don't have the strength to push a monster Western um, plate saw or hand saw, um, a Japanese saw can actually be handled fairly easily by, by most children. Another cool thing about Japanese saws is the plate can be so thin that they become immensely flexible. I mean, you can't do this with any of the Western saws. The great benefit for this is if I want to flush cut something, I can bend it down and use it right on the, right on the surface, cutting up against something, and I can actually put some force into it. Um, and, and cut very, very finely without cutting up the surface. So I can do this right on my bench top without any fear of running a uh, cut mark on my bench top. Whereas if I were to do that with one of these, number one, I would have to put a lot of force into it to bend it. But number two, the set on the teeth would scratch up the, uh, the surface of the bench. Another fantastic benefit to the Japanese saws, um, particularly with these, the price really is not that bad. They are, they are really, really well priced for their, for their quality and style. Um, whereas the Veritas back saws, these are my, my favorite bang for the buck in a new western saw. They are great, but they're 70 bucks a piece. Um, and eh, that can get a little bit pricey over time. And then you start getting into some of the, the really good ones and you're gonna be talking three, four hundred dollars a piece. Now the same thing goes for the Japanese saws. Um, you're gonna be talking three, four, sometimes a thousand dollars for the really, really quality saws. Um, but these ones, um, really for what you get, they're fantastic. And just getting out, just getting started, this is a fantastic deal uh, to get you going. And for the price, you just can't beat that. A benefit, though, to the Western saws is there are a lot of old saws out there. Uh, the, the old classics that you can pick up for three, four, five bucks at most all antique stores and places around, um, they can be restored very easily and are extremely cheap and you'll end up with a great quality saw. Whereas with Japanese saws, uh, especially in the United States, you're not going to find many um, old quality uh, saws to, to use. But uh, for new, there you go. So you want to get started in woodworking and you want to find out which should you go with. Should you go with a Japanese saw or a Western saw? And really, they're not one or the other. You can have both. Uh, they do require a whole different body mechanic uh, because you're pushing with one and you're pulling with the other. So you have to learn uh, one body mechanic or the other. I really don't suggest people get into both right off the bat. Learn one, get used to it, know how to make a straight cut with one, and then dive into getting the other, whether it is Japanese or Western saws. Some people really like the mystique of the Japanese saw. Um, they, they look cool, and there's this whole Japanese woodworking tradition that kind of comes with them, and that's great. Um, but the Western saws and Japanese saws, they both do the same thing. They cut the wood. It's all a matter of how do you want to do it? Do you want to do it on the push stroke? Do you want to do it on the pull stroke? Um, do you like the mystique of the Japanese saw? Um, do you like the, the history and quality of a Western saw? Uh, really, you can't go wrong. 
So I hope you like that. Um, whether or not you like Western saws or Japanese saws, if you're one or the other, there really isn't a huge amount of difference between the two as long as you learn what you're using and learn how to use it. Uh, they can both do the work great. They both have pluses and minuses and some love one and some love the other and some actually like both. <laughs> so I hope you like this video. It was an interesting one for me to put out. Um, I do look forward to putting out more videos like this and I want to say an incredible thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys really are a huge reason why why I can put out videos like this and uh, get the things I need to create this content. If you'd like to help out with that or uh, look at what all Patreon is about, you can do that right down here. Also, if you want to subscribe or see some behind the scenes footage, you can see that over here. That's about it for this week. And until next time, have a wonderful day.